video is designed to walk you through the frequent response question type 1 on the newly designed AP Environmental Science exam. The type 1 question requires you to design an investigation. What is required in the design and investigation free response question? This question presents students with an authentic environmental scenario accompanied by either a model or visual representation or quantitative data and may assess students' ability to describe and or explain environmental concepts, processes, and models presented in written format, analyze visual representations of data, analyze research studies that test environmental principles, or describe environmental problems and or potential responses. It's important to note that as this is a new question method, there are very few examples of what the actual question is going to look like. However, this video will go through the individual components that may be included in question one and provide an example of how to effectively design an experiment for a question like this. Let's go through the skills and how you would demonstrate those skills. The first skill for question one is to describe and or explain an environmental concept, process, or model presented in written format. The action words here are describe, which requires you to give the essential characteristics of the concept, process, or model that you are given. You should also be able to explain, which requires you to tell how the essential characteristics work together or how the larger components of the concept, process, or model exist together. This skill requires you to be able to demonstrate understanding of the overall environmental concept and the components that go into making the model that is presented functional in an environmental system. The second skill is to analyze visual representations or data. To analyze requires you to make determinations about whether the data or information is accurate or what it might be telling you. You may be given visual representations including tables, graphs, and diagrams, such as a diagram of a biogeochemical cycle skill is to analyze research studies that test environmental principles. Again, we're looking at analyzing, making determinations about whether something is accurate or what it might be telling you. In this case, environmental principles can include ideas about sustainability, overall systems, interactions, and specific concepts that are the basis of environmental practices. The last skill is to describe environmental problems and or potential responses. Again, description requires you to give essential characteristics. In this case, we are looking at problems and proposed solutions. Remember when you are asked to give a proposed solution, the solution must be viable and it must be logical. If it fails to meet either of those characteristics, it will not be considered for scoring purposes. So what general concepts should you be familiar with for this type of free response question? The individual content will vary from question to question, so it's impossible to say that you should be familiar with integrated pest management or agricultural practices or the use of mining resources in order to answer an experimental design question. However, you should be able to apply specific experimental design concepts to each of these questions. The specific scientific practices you should be familiar with are identifying method, variables, groups, interpreting data, and exploring and explaining modifications of methods and how that can impact what your data tells you and whether or not your hypotheses are correct. What should you do if the question asks you to give a method for testing a, an hypothesis? If asked, you should be able to explain how the experiment would be conducted, concisely but clearly. This requires you to identify how long you should do the experiment and how often you should take data. How are you going to control the variables? What are potential hypotheses and predictions? And what are the specific steps you're going to take? It's important to note that the kinds of experimental designs and investigations that you'll be asked to describe are going to be brief and they will not require extensive detail in terms of measurements 
or long scale time frames. You should always be able to identify the variables that are used in an experiment. This includes your independent variable, which is the variable that is modified in order to see a response. The dependent variable, which is the response. Control variables, things that are held constant throughout the entire experiment. And possible external variables, those things that are going to happen that you can't control for. You do not always have to have external variables in experiments, but you must have independent and dependent variables, and if at all possible, a control. Remember that the subjects of your experiment are not variables. So if you are testing an experiment on humans, the human themselves is not a variable. The human is a subject. Keep that in mind as you're looking at the sample problem that we will be doing later. You should also be able to identify groups, whether this is asked in a specific component of the question or whether you include it in the methods section. You should be able to identify the control group. What are they and why do you have one? You should also be able to identify the experimental group. In some experiments and designs, it may require you to have more than one experimental group. If you should have more than one, why? And then identify them specifically. You should also be able to interpret data, either data that is given to you in the question or hypothetical data that you are asked to generate. You should be able to explain whether or not the data supports your hypothesis, whether it is accurate or there might have been problems or bias. What does the data look like graphically? You may be asked to graph data. And are there any mathematical applications to identify patterns in data? It is entirely possible that you may be asked to mathematically analyze given data to understand whether or not it supports a hypothesis. The last thing you should be able to do, and this is important because it's likely going to be asked in multiple ways on multiple free response questions, is how can an experiment be modified and what is the impact of those modifications on data? So you should be able to explore group or variable changes, changes in the length of time or data collection, and then be able to identify how that change can address your data and your hypothesis. Most of the changes or modifications will be to the method. So keep those in mind as you're looking at the practice question. This question is a sample from the 2012 APES FRQ. Although this was given prior to the changes to the AP exam this year, it provides a good model for looking at how to design an experiment or an investigation for an AP exam question. If you have reviewed the sample questions released on AP Classroom, you will see that some of these components are similar. Take a moment to read the question and the information provided. A brief review of the question shows us that there are three skills that you will need to be able to answer the question and accurately demonstrate understanding. The first is to describe an environmental concept, process, or model. This is because the question is asking you to look at pesticides and the impact of pesticides on biological systems. The second is to analyze a research study that tests environmental principles. While there is no explicit research study given to you in this question, you are being asked to look at modifications and data that would change your hypothesis. Lastly, you need to be able to design an experiment. This is requiring you to clearly show method, groups, variables, and hypotheses. First address the concepts. In reading the information that's given in this question, we are looking at active ingredients and pesticides and the chemical compounds that are used to kill organisms. We are given two perspectives in which proponents claim that the use of pesticides can increase crop yields, while opponents claim that pesticides degrade water and soil quality. Specifically, we are looking at designing a laboratory experiment to determine whether or not a pesticide is toxic. So we're looking at active ingredients in pesticides. We're looking for something that may kill an organism. Now that we've looked at the basic concepts that we need to be able to talk about, let's look at the pieces of the experimental design that has been asked of us. We are asked to design a laboratory experiment to determine the toxicity 
of a pesticide on minnows. We are told for our experimental design we should state a hypothesis, describe our method, identify our control, and identify the dependent variable. We should also be able to describe experimental results that would lead us to reject our hypothesis. We're also told to be specific in that data. So this question is asking us to apply what we understand about pesticides, possibly their biomagnification, bioaccumulation, or compounds such as organophosphates, and be able to describe how we would understand whether or not that pesticide's active ingredient is toxic to a specific population. As you are reading this question, make sure that you are familiar with the fact that the minnow is not a variable. The minnow is the subject of your experiment. It's also important to know that we are looking at three questions that are tightly connected together. Question AI asks for a hypothesis. Question A2I requires us to give a method that would specifically test the hypothesis we have given. For this reason, if the hypothesis given in part AI doesn't match the kind of method that is given in part A2I, that means that we will not get points for the second component. You must design an experiment that accurately tests the hypothesis you were given. For part B, we are asked to describe experimental results that would lead us to reject our hypothesis in part AI. Even if we give very compelling evidence in part B, if it does not show contradictory to this hypothesis that's stated in AI, we will not get credit for it. Let's take a look at some sample responses to this question. Please note that this is not the only correct answer for this type of question, but it will show you how you would be expected to answer these questions on the AP exam. Question AI asks us simply to state the hypothesis. In this case, the hypothesis that I have gone with is that compound X is toxic to minnows. You could also use what is called a null hypothesis and state that there is no connection between compound X and toxicity in minnows. Either of those would be accurate and acceptable hypotheses. Sample response A2I requires us to describe the method we would use to test our hypothesis. It's important to note that we have to think about what are we trying to find out. We're trying to find out whether or not compound X is toxic to minnows. So is it enough for us to just say we have a tank without compound X and a tank with compound X? Is that going to give us reliable data? The answer to that question is no. In order to understand the connection between compound X and toxicity in minnows, we have to have different dilutions or concentrations. So in this case, we need a minimum of three different groups. That is the stance that this response takes. For example, minnows of similar age and type would be broken into four groups. One group is kept in tanks without compound X, while the other three are kept in tanks with different concentrations of compound X. Every day, the number of minnows in each tank is counted and recorded. This will continue until either two weeks have passed or one tank has no living minnows left. Take a moment and look at this response. What does this method look like? This method uses the LD50 methodology. By identifying that we're using the two week time frame, we could be looking at the lethal dose for 50% of our minnow population. By designing our experiment in this way, we have done two things. Number one, we have designed an experiment that can accurately tell us whether or not compound X is toxic. Secondly, we have also identified for our readers that we understand rates of toxicity, the fact that toxicity is all about dose, and how we can apply the LD50 model to questions that don't specifically ask about LD50. This is giving you an additional opportunity to demonstrate mastery of concepts, even if the concept is not specifically asked for in the question. For response A3I asks us to identify our control. 
in this case, the control is the group of minnows that are kept in the tank without compound X. Remember that the control is what we are keeping as close to normal as possible. In this case, the normal condition for the minnows is an environment that is without compound X. Sample response A4I requires us to identify our dependent variable. Remember that the dependent variable is the response that you were getting from reaction to the independent variable. In this case, the independent variable is the presence or absence of compound X. The dependent variable is the toxicity or the death of the minnows. So in this case, the dependent variable is the rate of death among the minnows. We do not identify that it is within the tanks with compound X because we are looking at rate of death across, for our cases, the four tanks that we have set up. Sample response B asks us to describe experimental results that would lead us to reject our hypothesis from A, I. Remember that our hypothesis we're using for this sample is that compound X is toxic to minnows. Remember it is also possible to use a null hypothesis indicating that there is no connection between toxicity and compound X. Let's take a look at our sample response. Potential results that would lead to rejection of the hypothesis would be if there were equal or greater rates of death in the non-compound X tank as there are in tanks with higher concentrations of the pesticide. If non-treated minnows die at the same or higher rates, it could be concluded from this experiment that there is no connection between concentration of compound X and toxicity of minnows. Is this response wordy? Yes, but it gets to the main point of what the question is asking you. What results would you get from your experiment that would make you say your hypothesis is incorrect? Because our hypothesis is that compound X is toxic to minnows, if our results showed us that there was no real difference between the rate of death of minnows in regular water and minnows in compound X water, we would say that there's no connection between the two. So, to sum up, how should you answer the type 1 FRQ? Let's look first at the things you should do before you start writing your response. You should be able to identify the overall concept that's being asked. On a scratch piece of paper, write down what is the concept. Describe what you see in the data, the model, or the graph. What is it telling you? How does it connect to the overall concept? Explain how you might get data experimentally. So look at the question. What is the question asking you to do with an experiment? Figure out how would you get experimental data from this particular concept, or how did they get the data for the table or graph that you're given? Then analyze the data and their impact on your hypotheses and methods. What does the data look like? What is it telling you? How might it have been obtained if it's asking you to interpret rather than design method. And in all of the FRQs as you're responding, be clear. Don't just use a term. If you use a vocabulary term, you must define it. For example, pollution is not an acceptable term. You must specify the type of pollution. Be concise. You only have a very limited amount of time to answer each question. Get straight to the point. Avoid the introductions, avoid the fluff. If your question can be answered in a single sentence, answer it in a single sentence. Don't restate the question. Get straight to the point. You should also be explicit. Assume that your reader has no idea of what you're talking about. You have to explicitly demonstrate that you understand a concept or can apply a skill. If you don't explicitly do it, they're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt and give you credit for it. 